So this is the Tudor factory and we are gonna have a big tour of the factory. They've just announced that we can just ask any questions and pretty much just lift the veil on any mystery. Kind of exciting. So it's the day after yesterday and I wanted a bit of time because I was very conscious of how much Tudor Kool-Aid I'd drunk. One of the big things of the event, and, and this props to Tudor for doing this, there were only two restrictions on filming the event, filming within their factory. One was don't capture other people's faces, very fair. The second one was you can't record the vault, again, very fair. Apart from that, it was game on. So back to my skepticism of Tudor. Regardless of what you think of their designs and their styling and their branding, if you just think about the product itself, simply the factual technical things around the product, they make a very good product. It's well made, it's solid, uh, it, the functionality is, is brilliant, uh, the, the finishing is very good for the price point that it's at, and the movement itself performs exceedingly well for the price point. And the price point itself is weird. In this world of watches, very little makes sense when it comes to price, especially when precious metals are involved or, or branding is involved. Yet, when you have Tudor, sister companies for Rolex, the biggest brand in the world, it's bizarre to have a price point that they're at. It's a lot of money, two, three, four thousand pounds for a watch is a lot of money, but within the watch world, it, it isn't, especially for the product that you get. And so that's where my skepticism came from, the BS, the, 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 the smoke and mirrors that we so often see in the watch world. So I immediately assume, yes, something is probably in-house, yes, something dodgy is probably going on for them to be able to afford to create a product that good and at that price. So this big building, the big red building is Tudor's uh, factory. This is where the Tudor watches are made. Um, and the building behind, the grey building, it's actually part of the red building, is Kinesi. This is Tudor's movement manufacturer. We will look at that in more detail in a little bit. So the red building doesn't actually make, they don't, there isn't a raw material that goes in and then is turned into a component. So essentially the red building is Tudor assembly. Parts come in from various locations and they are assembled in this building. This is where the watches are made, not where the components are made. So this is where it starts to get tricky. So the cases and the bracelets, something that a lot of people question, where are your cases and bracelets made? They obviously wouldn't say where they're made, uh, but geographically we know they are made in the region that they're in right now. This building is in La Loc, in the, the Jura Valley of uh, Switzerland. The company who makes the bracelets and cases isn't owned by Tudor. The movements and the components inside the movements are owned by subsidiaries of Tudor or companies that Tudor have bought to be part of the Tudor family. This is where things become clever commercially clever. Essentially, we have two types of in house movement. We have what I kind of consider true in-house. So where a watchmaker actually makes the parts of the watches. Roger Smith, for example, he has a beautiful little workshop where pretty much everything is made. You get the raw material in and he turns those parts into what he needs them to be. We then have corporate in-house. So if we think of the Swatch Group or Richemont, they will have a movement manufacturer, they will have a case manufacturer, and then those parts are then handed over to the, the brand perhaps, and then that watch will be assembled. And that is all classes in-house because commercially, Everything's owned by the same group. And this is essentially what Tudor is doing. So Tudor movements are made by Kinesi, a company that Tudor created. Tudor founded Kinesi to build their movements, but because Tudor doesn't make enough watches to bring down the price of the movements and make their watches more affordable, they have to get economy of scale behind them. And so Kinesi makes movements for Tag Heuer makes movements for Breitling, makes movements for Norcane. Now, none of those companies can turn around and say, oh, we're powered by Tudor. Well, Tag Heuer and Breitling wouldn't do that. But for example, Norcane can't say, oh, we're powered by Tudor, because they aren't, they're powered by Kinesi. Tudor owns Kinesi, but Tudor are able to protect their brand because there's this disconnect between them. Now, we're getting onto the bit which I wasn't allowed to, uh, to capture, and that's the vault. So essentially, you've got the Kinesi section of the, the manufacturer, the components are, are created in the man, in Kinesi. They're then transported to the Tudor side through this vault and through this insane robotic stock management thing. 
It's kind of like what I imagine an Amazon warehouse is like, but scaled down to a room. Essentially, you've got all these million components and this robot zooming around with the tray, picking out all the different components. So if we're gonna build this watch, we're gonna need this, 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 this. Puts it all into this little tray, places that tray onto this massive network of conveyor belts, and that watch essentially goes off to be built. And you see this conveyor belt throughout the whole factory. Certainly when you see the movement being assembled, you'll see the movement held in these special little cradles going around underneath the desk, or rather within the desk. It's really quite a clever system. Everyone who's part of the, the movement man manufacturer can do every single task. It isn't you're just trained to put this one component in and screw that down. You can do all of it. It's just for that moment, you'll be doing whatever you need to do. Now there are robots everywhere. I'm quite amazed at how automated everything is here. So we've got these little robots running around and moving. Let me just show you. You have these cute little hip sized robots just moving around like little servants with trays of components. And that's so bizarre seeing that. And there's little walkways for them to go and so they know exactly where to go. And the whole idea of the robots is it kind of taps into the whole purpose of this new factory. And that's to streamline the whole production, reducing the cost to the end consumer. What can we do here to make the process more efficient without damaging the reliability? For example, Putting the hands on a watch is a very tricky process. Hands are very fragile and they can be damaged so easily and the process by hand is quite slow simply because how fiddly these little things are. So to speed that up, they have a robot to do it, to put the hands on the dial. Currently, all Tudor movements are COSC certified. So the movement is put together, tested by Tudor, shipped off to COSC. They test it, they ship it back to Tudor. Tudor put it into a case and then test it again. So it's tested essentially three times. And this is one of the things that's going to change with Tudor. Because they have so many of these robots to streamline the testing process, because essentially testing doesn't really need human interaction. This can all be computerized. It's all factual. The moon either performs within tolerance during these very boring, very laborious uh, processes, or it doesn't perform within tolerance. A computer can figure that out very easily. So let the computer figure it out. They have this, so this little robot will pick up uh, movements and transport it over to this other robot. And it moves all these moons around and then places it in these little time graphers. And this thing can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's part of what Tudor are doing right now. They're using COSC as their main certification. They have announced that they're gonna be moving over to Metas certification. So this is where all the testing is done for the watches. Every single movement of Tudors is tested within their factory. But over here, we've been talking about the Metas testing that these guys do. It shows this massive magnet that is a permanent 15,000 Gauss magnet. They've got these massive industrial machines as well, which test the movement in every orientation, but to a size that I've never seen before. It's quite nuts. It was either last year or a couple of years ago, Tudor launched a, a Meta certified Black Bay. Kind of came across as a concept watch and Omega, who Meta certified their movements, uh, kind of gave Tudor a little jab to say, ah, you're never gonna be able to mass produce Meta certified movements. Well, that's exactly what Tudor are doing. When you test a watch for Meta certification, it's a 10 day process. And that increases the lead time for a watch massively. So Tudor has automated the whole system, which has to be audited once a month, every month by Metas themselves. So it's pretty cool. I've seen quite a few watch uh, factories, watch manufacturers now. I've, I've been to Roger Smith, I've been to Bremont, I've been to JLC. Armand Strom. And so I've seen different levels. This is by far the most commercial that I've seen, the most automated, the most robotic watch manufacturer I've seen. And this is why, or this is how, Tudor can create such a high performing product for essentially a low price. That sounds like a sales pitch. So let's say Tudor launches a Black Bay. No, let's say Tudor launches a Pelagos, hypothetically, with a Meta certified movement. And you pitch that against an Omega Seamaster with a Meta certified movement. Who would win? What do you guys think of all of this? Has this changed your view on Tudor? I haven't plugged any of my products. It's so annoying because I kind of see me plugging my products as a way of proving that these videos aren't sponsored by the watch brand and then I forget to do it. So uh, watch straps and watch accessories over at barkandjack.com. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the stylus video, hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. If you're into your photography, give me a follow at Adrian Barker and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.